Greetings! Today we're casting ball cranks, and that's not a euphemism, I hope. So, here we go. These are two ball cranks. These are the last, oh no, parts falling. These are the last parts in the first book of the Metal Working Shop from Scrap series by David Gingery slash Gingery. It's at the end of the Charcoal Foundry book. There they are. And these are in preparation of the lathe project. They're going to use a lot of these cranks. So we're going to start by casting them. And there's something weird about these. You notice they're 3D and kind of roundy looking. Many of the other projects, they have a clear parting line. So the item is rammed up in one of the flats, the top or the bottom. Uh, or there are two parts that lock together. These are neither of those. These are kind of lumpy, three-dimensional. And uh, how are you going to do it? Obviously, the parting line is a dead center, but how do you ram that up? Well, I'm going to show you. You have to do something called coping down? I don't know. Something. I'll, I'll just show you. We'll figure out what it's called later. So I drew this square, rectangle, whatever. I know shapes. So I drew this rectangle. That's the inner size of my smallest flask. And what we're going to have to do here is build up a surface. It doesn't have to be quite so lumpy and gross. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to use this part of it. And we're going to embed these in this surface. Kind of build it up to the parting line there. Make sure everything is within the this, this shape. Now, I've never done this technique before, but this is the project that the book series teaches you how to do it. So here we are, learning how to do it. I'm going to stick this one down in there. Oh no, we're losing structural integrity of the sand. Here, I got an idea. There, we'll separate them. Now this piece of wood in the middle is uh, because you're supposed to cast these with a slight hole through them. So I'm going to do one of them with the wood technique, the wood dowel, and I'm going to do the other one completely without a hole and then drill it in later. Because, you know, me and drills, we get along great. By which I mean, uh, looks like I'm going to be buying some more drill bits to break. And I think that's sort of rammed up to the parting line. Now I'll try to assemble these two. Mm, need to be closer together. I think what I can learn from this is not to use a flask that is obviously way too small. There, those are both within the, the area there. You can also see different colors on this wood. The white, the, this kind of wood color, that's wood. The white is a kind of modeling clay, which I didn't really like. This sort of yellowish stuff, that's uh, another kind of wood filler that I didn't like. And this dark stuff is called Super Sculpey. Still don't know what I want to use. I think the Super Sculpey out of all of them worked the best. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Alright, I'm going to trim the edges just a wee bit. And from here we pull out the parting powder. And now this. If you remember, these used to stick out a little more, and they were using on that board. Well, that board is now a bookshelf. So I don't have it anymore, so I cut them off. Now here we go. Now from this point, you ram it up like normal. And guess who got a sifter that I totally didn't steal from the kitchen when my wife wasn't looking? Now what this does is it only lets little bits of sand through. So you gotta force it kind of through, but instead of just getting a bunch of big clumps, ugly, ugly clumps, I get a bunch of powder on top. Now when I ram it all down smooth, it'll kind of, you know, look better. Hopefully, anyway. This sand specifically just sticks together so tight. So you just look at it falling. It's like snow. Rust colored sandy snow. That sounds terrible. Oh, that feels so cool to tamp down. More! Probably don't have to do this quite as much as I am, but it's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, it's so soft and fluffy. So if you remember right, I got this from Chirpy's Tinkerings, and he informed me you're supposed to use this part here with the layers to kind of create this pattern so that the layers all stick together and then the flap is just more for the top and since every tip he's given me so far has been super good I'm gonna listen to what he says here we go now moment of truth does it part it does not part it held too well um, excavation time there we go there's a crack forming right along the parting line. Excellent. I don't know if you can see that, but that actually worked. Ha! Huh. Don't sound so surprised. Come on. Oh! I mean, of course it worked. Obviously, right? There, you can still see the baby powder. So these fit in here, and now we have a surface to put this on and ram that up. But I'm gonna clean it up just a wee bit first. Okay, I am sufficiently happy with that. Quite happy. That actually worked. I can't believe it. 
If it's not breaking the charade too much, I did not think that was going to work. Okay, now I need somewhere for the stuff to flow in. Um, uh, eh? Th there? Does that look good? Way too close to the wall for my comfort, but eh. Who cares about my comfort? I'll just sink that in, why not? I'm not going to do an outgate. A lot of the patterns in the book do not have any outgate. And I hear Petrobon vents really well, so we'll just go with that. Back to the sifter. Sifter is my friend. I'm not going to smooth the top of this. I'm going to build myself a pouring basin to prevent all this from happening again. And because sandcastles are fun, but mostly protecting my equipment. Yeah, we'll go with that. Alright, there. That's not bad. And now the test. Ho oh ho! It worked! Want to do a little dance, because that worked. Alright, pull this out. Clean up around that hole. I know, sand is dripping off my knife. Man, that's hard to do when you're full of caffeine. My fingers are shaking. Also excitement, but I would be a lie to say I'm this excited that I can't hold my hand still. I am, however, this caffeinated. Oh, that just fell out. Oh, along with some sand. Who knows? That just means I'll have a little bit more, little bit more metal on the edges of these. But I can fix that with Mr. Grinder. I mean, he's a grinder. He doesn't have a name. I mean, it's, it's not a he. It's a grinder. And since I'm all about woodworking sacrilege, today I'm going to cut my gates with this very nice sharp chisel I have. Sacrilege because using it on sand will probably ruin the edge. This is one of my pattern making chisels. Because I make some of the patterns in wood. I didn't use this particular chisel in this pattern, but I will in a pattern you will be seeing very soon. Soon and unrelated to this lathe project. And just to be careful, I'm going to feed another one over there. Obviously I can't put the wood back in there, so I have a backup plan. This piece of metal rod, which is now way too long. Um, I have this piece of very hot metal rod. Ow, ow, ow. I'm going to set that down for a minute. Alright, now this, the idea is I set it down in there, and the metal pours around this and hardens onto it. Uh, however, the book suggests charcoal, rubbing some charcoal on it, so there's a graphite coating, uh, and that'll allow it to release a little more easily. There. That's either sufficiently carboned up or it's never coming out. Ta-da! And that's how a core works. Sort of. There'll be a lot more on cores later when I need to do more on cores. As for now... Whoop. Let's set this back on there. Ta-da! And fire up the grill! I mean burner. Whatever. I'm hungry. We joined the melt already in progress. Using aluminum for this, the book calls for zinc, but my aluminum bucket, as you see, still has a whole bunch of scrap cast aluminum in it. So we're going to melt that, pour these, pour it into there. Plus, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work, so I'm going to use the aluminum surplus uh, instead of the little zinc that I have, so I don't waste any. Alright, here we are. It's all melted. There's some dross on the top, and I'm doing a mistake already! Look at that. I'm removing the dross before I put in the flux. If you remember uh, in the aluminum can video, when I put in the flux, I could get a lot more of the aluminum out of uh, the dross. So I, I would use light salt, which is a mix of uh, sodium chloride, or whatever it is, and potassium chloride, or something like that. Calcium chloride, one of those other salts. So it's like a low sodium table salt. Anyway, I'm not doing that until after I remove the dross, and that's probably not a good idea. So I waste a little bit of aluminum, but eh, whatever. It's not like aluminum grows on trees, but it does build up quite quickly if you're careful. What you will not see me do is degassing. Yeah, I, I before I used washing soda for degas, so there goes the flux. Yeah, that's flux light salt to help it pour better. But I saw a video by a channel named Lucky Gen something or another. Anyway, I'll find a link and I'll, I'll put the link in the description. And he went through a very, very nice, complete, convincing process that showed uh, washing soda as a degasser does not work. It's in, in fact, it's harmful. So, so that's why I'm not doing it. And uh, just watch that video after this one, and you'll see exactly why. He does a much better job of explaining. He pulls out a textbook and everything. Like, wow. All right, the pour went okay. I'm pouring some extra ingots. I use this as an opportunity to, to melt more of my scrap so I can make some more ingots. And they sure are purdy. Look at that. They're bubbling. And this, this crucible tongs working just fantastic. I'm still loving it. Uh, and, and in fact, I still haven't gone through one tank of propane yet, which is amazing. 
Love that sound. Plunk. That's what it sounds like. Plunk. Just a million more of these and I could build a house. And here it is. I'll spare you the details of removing all of it with my excavating trowel. But we are going to open it up and at least see what they look like for now. Here we go. It's like opening a present. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything that beautiful? Probably. I mean, I saw my wife and kids today. They're pretty awesome. But still, they're not made out of aluminum. Seriously, in the casting community, I really want these trowels to catch on. They are not paid sponsors. You know what? I'll just break it off. I'll sort that out later. Cool. Look at that. They totally turned out. I can't believe that worked. But I totally didn't think that was going to work the first try. And it worked. Boom. Cleaned up with the grinder. Now the next question is, can I get that shaft out? Hmm. Perhaps bigger hammer. Yeah, it's coming. All right, I'm going to need to find a punch or drill that out or, you know, there had to be a snag somewhere in the project, right? It can't go perfectly entirely. Look at this. You can even see where I use the putty detail preserved so nicely. Can't get that shaft out, but eh, I'll figure out that problem later. It's so shiny and surprisingly hot. Ouch. Very, very hot. Okay.